Hello everyone. Welcome to the lecture series of computer networks. I am Harsh Kattar working as assistant professor in department of computer science at KIET group of institutions Ghaziabad. In last class we were discussing about the flow and error control. Today we are focusing on the another functionality of data link layer that is framing. Then what is the concept of framing? How many approaches are there? and what are the latest frames which we are using in our ethernet means layer 2. Let us have a look to the framing part. What is framing? In the role of data link layer which is known as the layer 2 of OSI model, the data which is received at the data link layer from the higher end layers like network layer. So from network layer, data link layer will receive the packets only. And in data link layer itself, data link layer will add the header and the tailor part with the packet and now it will become a frame. So what should be the size of frame? Because one packet and one frame it is not necessarily important. If the size of packet is more might be multiple frames are required. Suppose I am saying the capacity is two words and I am saying my name is Harsh Khattar. So my name towards done is harsh towards done then cutter. So here the data is divided into three frames okay my name is harsh and cutter. Now you will say what about the second word do not worry about this the frame size is fixed or variable length we will talk about this thing in detail. So here in this case we can say yes frames are the unit where the data is measured in the data link layer. So it is clearly mentioned in the slide that the data link layer needs to pack the bits into frames so that each frame is distinguishable from another. We have the different frames. So how we can represent, yes this is a frame 1, frame 2, frame 3. So there are so many fields in the frame where the receiver who is receiving the frames can, can identify who is the sender, the address of the sender is there. There are so many fields like the sequence number to check there is a error in frame or not, the particular CRC or the checksum is there. We will discuss in detail in the next lecture about the uh, CRC and how you can check there is error or not. So now focus on this framing. So this particular thing is known as framing. You can also take a simple example in the layman's language like you want to send a letter to your friend. So you are going to the postal office and they will give you one envelope and you are putting your letter inside the envelope and all the envelopes provided by the uh, postal office are same. So outer cover is same but inside the letter, inside the envelope there are different types of letter might be one letter is there in English another letter is in Hindi might be the size of the letter one on the A4 page one in the register page one on the ruled lines one on the unruled lines so un unruled page so these type of uh, letters or different types of data can be there but the size of the frame or the symmetry should be maintained so how you can define this so there is a term which is known as the delimiter so this delimiter is one envelope which I am taking in, in the example. So in technical terms in data link layer we have a delimiter which we are adding which represents this is a frame, one frame. Then for the another frame again the delimiter will represent this is a second frame, third frame, fourth frame. Okay? So frame is one unit here where the data is comprised inside the frame. Now can we say that frame is always of the same size? So the answer is no, there are two types of frame. One is the fixed size framing, another is the variable size framing. If I am saying the framing is of fixed size, then this is the best one, the simplest approach. Here I am saying directly, yes, all the frames are of same size. <coughs> Sorry. So all the frames are of same size. So there is no issue. When we have all the frames of same size, then at the receiver end, receiver will know, yes, there are four words in each frame. If any of the frame is carrying more or less words, it will comply to the uh, sender and sender will send it again. So we have seen the retransmission method again, what is the retransmission method in the previous lecture, 
uh, what are the schemes under this and how the you can avoid the collision under the previous to previous lecture we have discussed about the CSMA and its variants. So now we are focusing on how we can make the frames under the technique framing. If my frames are of, if my frames are of variable size, then what we will do? So very first thing is how we can represent that what is the size of the particular frame. If I am saying my first frame is of 2 size 2, second frame is of size 3 means my name and is Harsh Khattar. So my name word length 2 frame 1, word length 3 frame 2 is Harsh Khattar. So there is something which I am sending to you prior to the frame that yes, Prior to the frame, I need to say, yes, how many bits or how many words are there in my frame. So for variable length, we need to work hard. Otherwise, for the fixed size frame, there is no as such issue. The working is very simple. So let's focus on the methods, how we can do the framing and how we can notify the receiver how to create these frames. So there are two approaches. Both approaches are under the variable size. Fixed size, there is no issue. Under the variable size, we have two main categories, two approaches. One is the character oriented, another one is the bit oriented. Character oriented means we are adding some character, meaningful character. In case of bit oriented, we are adding some bits which we will remove later on, which is of no use, okay, just to identify. But in character, we are adding some character as a counter which represents like first frame will carry two words. So here I am notifying you in first frame there are two words. Okay. If I am saying whenever I am saying full stop. So full stop means next line. My name is Harsh Kattar full stop. Here I am not notifying you that in first frame there are five words. You are identifying these five words because of my full stop. I am in KIET group of institutions full stop. Now this full stop represents how many words are there in my frame. So the first example where I am sending the data like first frame will carry two words my name, second phase, second frame will carry three words is Harsh Khattar is the example of character oriented. Okay. And next one the example of full stop was the here under the category bit oriented. So these are the two examples for your uh, understanding purpose, not for the exam point of view, so that you can understand what is the difference between character oriented and bit oriented. Let's have a look in detail. See this diagram. This diagram is for the character oriented, character count is there. Like I am sending the first frame and my first character prior to the frame I am saying, yes, this will carry my five words. Okay. So next three words are very important where three is again one word. So I am saying first frame will carry five words, five this is of no use. I am removing this because it is saying yes, this is a first value and one, two, three, four. This is my data. Second, I am saying again five. So five represents that next five words are under this particular frame. So this is the first word, second, third, fourth, fifth. So these four are the data which is a meaningful data. Similar way 8, 8 represents this frame will carry 8 values. First is ignored because this is a original uh, character inserted and these 7 are the meaningful data. Okay, This is something like I am then Harsh Khattar 2 words. So 2 2 I am representing it. So this is the example of character count where the first value represents how many uh, data streams are there inside the particular frame. So 8 characters, so remove the first character because it is itself 8 and then other 7 are the data items. So if there are n values, so meaningful data is n minus 1 is the data plus 1 is the original value. Okay. So this is the example of character oriented. But there is one issue. If there is any error in the data, generally error happens in the one character. So if the value is changed, the first value is changed, what will happen? The whole meaning of the frame will change. Okay. So this is one example, here it is 5, then yes, this is a date meaning 1 and these 4 are the data character. 
here it is mentioned 7 which is the error again this example is from the Forozen book this one you can refer it for the further study the explanation is well defined in the book so here these 6 characters will be taken again this is 1 now what is the meaning of 1 this frame will carry only one character that is again the count of the frame so is it a meaningful data no means there is some sort of error so it is very hard to understand is there any error or not so this type of scheme means the character oriented is no longer in use it is not preferable okay so why we are studying because this is a foundation this is very important to understand what is the issue problems in the previous one why we are shifting towards the latest one okay so in character oriented this is an example of character currently we are not using character oriented we are using only the bit oriented protocols so under these we have two examples so let's let's discuss this why we are not using this because if one bit is changed the whole count will change so this is no longer being used so this is about the character count issue next is bit oriented protocol when we talk about the bit oriented again there are two concepts one is the byte stuffing and another one is bit stuffing byte means byte what is one byte a collection of eight bits okay so one byte is inserted so here you can treat this like I am saying full stop so whenever I am saying full stop it means now this is the end of the frame or starting of the another frame similarly I have added one extra byte which is escape or flag so byte stuffing is a process of adding one extra byte we are adding one extra data which we will remove when we will start reading the data like generally we don't read the full stops but we assume that the next line will start so this is some sort of stuffing of data now we are stuffing how many bits one bit or multiple bits if it is one bit it means bit stuffing if we are adding a group of bits means one byte then we are saying it is byte stuffing so currently the topic is byte stuffing we when we are adding the eight bits okay so whenever there is a difference a flag or escape character is inserted in the text how we can insert it like this is my data which is coming from the upper layer means this is my packet so this packet is available here and I am adding in the prior to this escape and after this escape so once these escape are received it means inside these escape inside the double quotes we have the main data so these double quotes you can treat here as the escape when we will read it we will not read under the quotes no we are not reading like this we are just emphasizing on it yes this is known as bit stuffing or byte stuffing so we are not reading double quotes but we are just seeing this and removing it so this is the example of escape okay so now the change one is the new one is this when the receiver will receive this it will ignore this escape so you will see this was added here at the sender end at receiver end will remove this part so this is the original data so this is known as byte stuffing now every data is represented in the form of bits and yes the collection of bits is byte for example I am saying what special combination I am taking if I am saying 01010101 these are the 8 bits which I am taking as the escape means it is not defined it is a combination of 0 and 1 means the combination of bits in binary number system so any combination I can take suppose I am taking it as 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 this is what I have used as escape but can we assure that this is never being used in the data means it is not like that might be in the data stream which is a important data which sender is sending to the receiver might be the same combination should be there in the data itself then what receiver will do receiver will ignore it okay if by mistake you have added a full stop then what the readers will perceive that this is a full stop and this is a next line so it will divide the frame and the meaning of the data will change so what is the solution for this so this is one issue if the flag or escape 
is there inside my data how I will represent. So here as a programmer, as a computer science person, I have added this. If I have any such type of frame like this, so I will ignore it. Means this is for sure, I will ignore it. Is it clear? So how we will represent it? I will mention it again. Say I am saying, I have mentioned here, if I am saying A, A is a special word which I am representing which I need to ignore. A means starting of the frame and I am ignoring it. And if I want to write A, B, C, D, this is my data. So what will happen? No issue. Just focus on the, your concept and the software. So this is my data and I have mentioned here A. So whenever you will say A, you will ignore it. And again, we are using some special value which says, yes, repeat it. So first one will be ignored and the another one will be the original data. So this represents, yes, if A is received, ignore first one and consider second one. So this will help you in understanding the concept that which one to ignore, which one to leave. Okay, take one more example from your book. If your original value is this, we are representing the another one. Suppose this is my original character A flag B. Now I want to add the escape and this flag is used. So I am using this escape. So yes, escape will be removed which says next is to be considered. So this one will be considered. So at receiver end, what it will do? A, yes it is escape, ignore it, then flag, then B. If there is escape itself, again there is no issue. First escape will be removed and second will be considered. So it is A, escape, B. If both are used, say escape and flag, both special bytes are used, no issue. We are doing the same task. We will insert escape here and escape here. So you will see A, escape, escape, means first escape will be ignored and this will be considered. First escape will be ignored and this flag will be considered. So at receiver end, what it will receive? A, escape, flag, B, like this. If two escapes are there, means these are the bytes, complete bytes, the data, suppose 0, 01, 0, 01, 0, 01. So if such combination is there, what we will do? We will add here escape. At receiver end, it will ignore it, consider it. Then add one more escape here. So before this escape and before this escape. So four escapes are mentioned here. So this is how we are doing the byte stuffing. In this manner, our integrity of the data will maintain. Okay, and there is no loss of data. This is one method how we are using the byte stuffing under the bit oriented method. Okay, this is how we are making the frames. Next is byte stream. Here we can say we are inserting a special character or a special bit like full stop. Here I am saying if in a data we have this five ones in continue, we are adding one zero, which represents, yes, this zero is to be removed at the receiver end. This represents, yes, this is the end of the frame. Particular frame is end at this particular point. Again, if my original data will carry this five ones and one zero, I will add one zero before this like the previous escape. Here, we are adding this escape. Similarly, we are adding zero here. So once the data will be in the readable form at receiver end, it will ignore first zero and consider the next zero. So this is the example of the bit stuffing. So bit stuffing says we are adding one extra zero whenever the five consecutive ones are there followed by the zero in the data. So this will be considered as a flag. Okay. So this is about the bit stuffing. You can refer this for more detail. This is one example. Suppose this is your original data where you will see 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. 7 ones are there. So what we will do? After 5 ones, we will stuff 1, 0. And after this, we have 2 ones. Once the data is received at the receiver end, receiver will ignore this and compute the same data with 7 ones, like this. Okay, so this is the example of bit stuffing. 
might be you will see one question on bit stuffing and difference between the byte stuffing in the university exam. So, again this is an important concept. So, where we are using these frames? Answer is in the transmission under layer 2, but in layer 2 which is mainly focuses emphasize on the ethernet. Ethernet means it is a standard of IEEE. In next lecture, we will discuss about the IEEE standards and how these standards are defined. So, in this, we have a fixed frame format. Generally, we talk about the frames and what are the contributor fields inside the frame like sequence number, payload, how we are adding the extra bits, how we are stuffing the bits. These type of things are very important. So, now I am talking about the practical implementation in case of Ethernet data transfer, how we are defining the frames or we can say the frame size is defined. So, under this, under this uh, Ethernet frame in layer 2, this protocol carries various fields like the length of the field is 2 bytes in length, this is a, about the frame. Then the which determines the length of the payload that the, this is a starting or end. The whole data, the original data which I want to send, suppose this is a line, my name is Harsh Kattar. So, this my name is Harsh Kattar is my data. So, this data can be from 0 to 1500 bytes, not bits. If you want to convert it to the bits, multiply by 8. So, these are the number of bytes which we can transfer inside the one particular frame. Then padding, padding means if I am sending only 100 bits, my maximum size is this. So, what we will do? If I am saying my number is 2 and I want to convert it in 3 digits. So, what you will do? You will add 2 zeros to make it in 3 digit. Okay? So, what you have done? This is padding. Okay? So, this is known as padding. In a similar manner, when we are sending the data for making the symmetry of the frames, if my data is less, then I am using some padding bits. So, it depends that how many data bits are there or bytes are there and how many extra bits I want to add and at the receiver end, we will remove those padding bits. I hope with this example, it is clear that what is padding. Then, this is a frame check sequence field. So, generally, we are using the 32 bit CRC. So, 32 bits means how many bytes? Divide by 8. So, 4 bytes. 4 bytes CRC. So, in coming lectures, we will also discuss about the CRC and the other uh, codes. So, this is how a particular frame of Ethernet is defined. If there is any question that draw Ethernet frame and what are the attributes, then you can use the reference or this figure. In the figure, you will see here the preamble, the fixed 7 words, which is similar to the flag which we are using. That was 0, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 0. So, this was the preamble or the flag. Then we have this. This is basically the start frame delimiter, means from which point the frame will start, okay, like double quotes, like the escape one. We are starting this. So, this is the start of the frame delimiter, which indicates the start of frame from where a particular frame starts. Then this is the destination address, means where the packet is going. This is the sender address. Here uh, it must be mentioned, yes, this is a destination address, sender address which is coming from the packet from the higher end layer, network layer. Then this is a type, which type of data we are doing this, means uh, this is one category which represents in the two bits. So, we have this point type. So, here we have various combinations 0, 0, 0, 1 and based on this we are defining which type of data is there. Then this is a data. As I said, this data is basically represents how many data bits or bytes we are transferring. So, this is my original data, what is what is my name or this is my name is Harsh Kattar, I am from this college. So, this is a data which I am adding here. This is a padding part to make the symmetry of the frames, then CRC 4 bytes. So, this is 4 bytes means 32 bits. Similarly, you can see the differentiation here as the pad, cyclic redundancy, then the type, type indicates the protocol which protocol you are using in this. So, as I have said, in the binary form, there are various combinations. So, here it is of 2 bytes. So, 2 bytes means how many bits? 
we are representing it in generally in hexadecimal format or if in binary you are making it so 16 bits are there where you can uh, make such combinations to represent the number of protocols. So these are the major seven fields inside the frame of Ethernet. Now are we using the same frame? So answer is yes we have two categories under this. Category one is HDLC. HDLC is basically uh, currently we are using this HDLC. It is the high level data link control frames which generally use for the point to point as well as multi point connections. So this frame has three category of uh, this particular protocol has three category of frames. Currently in Ethernet we are saying a common frame is there for data transfer. But HDLC is saying we have three categories I frame, S frame and U frame. What is the meaning of I frame is for the information for the general data transfer. S is for the acknowledgement and the retransmission. If I am sending the uh, retransmission of the packet then the frame is different which represents like yellow signal is for yes just watch, green signal just go. So this is three type of uh, frame, unnumbered frame is just for the initialization means connection established and connection termination. So these are the frame formats, uh, this is just for your information purpose. This is as I said U frame is the unnumbered one for connection establishment and release in between the data is transferred in the form of I frame and S frame is for the retransmission of packet. So might be you will see one question on different types of frames, what is the importance in HDLC. Similarly this is for both the point to point and multi point connection. We have a specific protocol for point to point which is named as point to point protocol means PPP. This is a very important protocol in university exam generally you will we will see these type of questions. So what is the speciality of point to point? It is meant for the point to point. The things are better. Here the flag format is a bit different. Here we are using the flag, this one. This is my uh, complete flag or escape bit which I am using here. The frame format you can see here. For more details you can refer this reference because our lecture is short and these but the issues are important. In point to point what are the issues? It is for meant for the PPP means point to point not for the broadcast purpose. Here are some uh, different frames not there like HDLC. So we are using for the specific purpose only point to point otherwise HDLC is better. So this is all about the uh, today's class in summary in the important questions you will see discuss framing, approaches of framing difference between bit and byte stuffing, ethernet frame format or difference between PPP and HDLC. So generally if you are transmitting the data which type of uh, frame you will use basic ethernet, HDLC or PPP. So this is question for you. Thank you.